Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the very first video um, of hopefully many of me doing flying stuff. Um, I decided a couple months ago that flying is pretty cool and I wanted to get my private pilot license just to be able to fly around to various cities and, uh, and you know stuff within a few hours of Atlanta uh, where I live. So uh, I'm getting my private pilot license with Centennial Aviation Academy out of Peachtree Cab Airport. Uh, so I've got some video of this. My wife, Maddie, got me a GoPro for my birthday last month. And so um, the, all of the planes at Centennial have GoPro mounts. So I can just like pop it up and uh, record some video. There is a way to record audio, like really good audio. Um, but I don't know how to do that. And the device is like 150 bucks or something. So I don't think I need that yet. Uh, but the, the audio for the video, like the actual video video, is a little bit... Uh, it's a little bit bad. So it's like down. Because otherwise it sounds like this. Which is like not the most uh, useful thing. So uh, so yeah, so this is the Northwest Ramp in uh, uh, DeKalb Peachtree Airport. And I'm in Annie today. There's uh, They've got three planes that we fly in a lot. And this is uh, November 103 Alpha Victor, uh, better known as Annie. So this is the non-movement area uh, at Petri de Cab in the Northwest Ramp, and in order to get out of it, uh, there's a there's a line up here that you cross. And I'd already called, uh, but this is what the call calls the the call sounds like to Petri Ground, uh, asking permission to taxi. Petri Ground, Cherokee one zero three Alpha Victor at the Northwest Ramp, CFR North departure with Bravo. One zero three Alpha Victor, Petri Ground two one right, taxi via Bravo Hotel Delta. Echo, cross through point of Oslo, let's sleep. That's a 2 1 right, uh, Bravo Hotel Delta Echo, uh, 3 Alpha Victor. So that was the call that I made, again, before I left. You have to make that call before you leave the uh, non movement area over on the right, kind of the parking lot of the airport. Uh, and one mistake I made that some of you uh, acute listeners may have heard is during that readback, I said Bravo Hotel Delta Echo to two one right and I didn't say clear to cross three four. Uh, and so like a second and a half later, I'm like, wait a minute, I missed something. So I said, uh, cross three four. Which is like a little mistake. And uh, obviously I try to keep those to a minimum, um, but there's like a lot going on. Uh, like when you're driving a plane and trying to talk to people and listening to tower and listening to your instructor and trying not to hit any planes. Um, unfortunately, Peachtree Tower, Peachtree Ground, they're fantastic. They're super patient because um, they're used to having a lot of students. And so, uh, yeah, I try not to test their patience, but um, that's just an example of like a little thing in a, in a readback. So on this particular day, we are taxiing to 2-1 right. Uh, and here's actually the clearance and the, uh, like the taxi route we took. We took Bravo and then a left on Hotel, crossed over that runway 3-4. And then we took a right on Echo, sorry, right on Delta, and then a left on Echo, and uh, ended up in the run-up area for 2-1 right. Um, so that's one thing, actually, that I didn't know until I started uh, private pilot license training, this PPL school, uh, is that in these smaller planes, before you take off, there's these sections that uh, it seems like everyone goes to. Um, there's probably some rules about when you can skip it, but for, for me, literally every flight, um, we do this run-up before you take off. And the point of that is basically to test all the systems and at one point you actually kind of, you put throttle in, um, not quite to max, but a decent amount to make sure that your f you know, fuel pressure, oil pressure, oil temp, make sure all that stuff is, uh, is solid. So that's what this is, uh, which what you're about to see. Um, and I think I can fast forward through a lot of this because it's just, there's just a checklist of stuff. Uh, and actually I have like a copy of what the, the run-up checklist looks like. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, they have a copy on board, so that's what I use um, What I use for that. So, blah, 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 we're doing the run-up. You can actually, you can see my hair. You can see Victoria, this is my instructor on the, in the right seat. Um, you can see her hair going crazy because the propeller's up at like 2,000 RPM instead of like the 1,100 or so while we were taxiing. Um, so we're doing our run up, everything looked good. Uh, you make another call to tower telling them that, hey, we're done with the run up. Let me go to the 
to the runway and then they normally just say yep okay go to the runway uh in this case i think there was we were waiting on someone maybe there was someone coming by or maybe there was i can't see from here but i think there was someone waiting to take off so they've kind of held on to us uh for a little while until it was clear to go uh and then yeah and then we taxied to the runway and got to wait behind this guy for a little bit And I think this, yeah, on this day, it wasn't too long of a wait. Sometimes it, you have to wait for like, you know, five, ten minutes sitting here. Um, fortunately, on this day, I think it was only like two or three. Um, but it's a busy airport. And so you get a lot of people landing, a lot of people doing pattern work. And um, yeah, so uh, fortunately, we're clear for takeoff. Uh, I think I might have that audio recording somewhere, but um, it wasn't too interesting. They say something like Cherokee 103 off of Victor. Runway two one right, clear for takeoff, um, and something about turning to the north if that's where you're headed. Uh, so part of why I'm recording is because I want to like watch myself and s like see what I can do better um, without needing someone to tell me. And right away, any any flight instructor or anyone that's done any of this is just like, yeah, more right rudder. That's always that's like always what you do. Um, and I actually learned about this in ground school. A couple weeks ago but basically there's a there are a few different things that happen to the plane when you're taking off that force it to the left uh, effectively um, those are one of them is pretty simple it's basically the, the torque from the propeller spinning um, the there's a this thing called P factor where basically the fact that the propeller blade on its way down is at a different angle than it is on its way up and so that causes a, a shift in kind of the direction um, and then the last one is the there's actually like the spinning wake from the propeller kind of goes back and hits the left side of your rudder. So it literally is pushing you to the left. Um, and so it's, it's kind of a joke, like more right rudder. I get told that all the time. And you can see that uh, while I'm taking off, I'm definitely to the left of that center line. And I'm like, you can see me like kind of move over to the right, but it's not quite enough. And I still kind of go to the left. Um, and there might have been, I think this was the day where there was a bit of left crosswind. And so you can see that, that yeah, I had, a, had some struggles just staying on the, on the center line, um, kind of off to the left. And you definitely don't want to go too far to the left when you're taking off from here, because you can see uh, at the bottom left there, there's a second runway. There's, there's parallel runways at PDK. And so you definitely don't want to creep into the other runways space. Um, so I think that's probably it for this first video. i got to figure out if I need to edit this or... Uh, or what to do, but um, that's it. So this is my first video. Let me know if you have any suggestions, improvements, um, any questions about it. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, see you later.